folks, Jim and Leela here for Geeking Out episode whatever it is now. Uh, yeah. We're probably like 205 or 204. Yeah, sometime after 200. Sometime after 200. This is getting hard to remember <laughs> numbering systems here. Closer to 300. Yes. So we're uh, about two weeks away from our gigantic Batman episode. Yeah. Uh, that should be interesting. Um, but this week we have a very special number 100 issue in Walking Dead. Yes. Which I'll be talking a bit about and uh, Leela will probably chime in Absolutely. a little bit too. Um, but I'll start off this week with a blast from the past in Battle Beasts yeah. number one. <laughs> now, okay, if you're a kid of the 80s like I was, and me. <laughs> then you remember the Battle Beasts. Yes. What you might not know is a bit of the history of the Battle Beasts. Now, the Battle Beasts were a spin-off line from the Transformers in Japan. Yes. They were used in the Headmasters TV series. Yeah. Uh, and I believe they even had a short-lived uh, series of their own. I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, there was a comic series from in the 80s from Blackthorn, mm -hmm. which no longer exists. No. But, uh, and now, well, after years and years, they're back! Yes! Uh, yes. And basically, in this one, for century, centuries, battles have raged over the dread weapons while on Earth, a linguist named Bliss has unlocked the secret translation of an ancient ancient scroll and it brings the relentless battle beasts to the planet in search of their ancient weapons. Yeah. Thanks a lot, you, <laughs> you stupid linguist. It's always oh. the linguist messing uh, it up for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> First it was the dumb red rednecks who uh, destroyed us with Martians and now it's uh, the damn linguists. Yes. All right, so this is a really nice callback to the 80s series, and I really enjoyed it. It was actually quite well written and really well drawn, mm -hmm. uh, which is saying a lot for an IDW book, because yeah. sometimes the cover is the best part. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, but I actually had a lot of fun with this one, and if you're a fan of the Battle Beasts, which are coming back to toy shelves probably pretty soon... Because everything old is new again. again exactly. <laughs> uh, you're probably going to enjoy this. And if you get a chance, go pick up Headmasters on DVD and have a good laugh at that series because it's utterly hilarious. Okay, so next up for me is Revival number one, which is very interesting that it's released the same week as Walking Dead number 100. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you'll see why. Mm. Um, so one day in a quiet rural town, the dead come back to life. Woo! Yep. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Officer Dana Cypress must deal with the media scrutiny, religious zealots, and government quarantine that has come with the Revivers. Mm. Now Dana must also try to solve a brutal murder, and everyone, living and dead, is a suspect. So I really loved this. It's okay. actually not your typical zombie book, at least not yet. It's you know kind of early to tell if it's going to turn out to be typical, but I really enjoyed this. It had great twists and turns from the writer, Tim Seeley. Yep. Awesome. And gorgeous art by Mike Norton. Um, this is in full color, unlike Walking Dead. So, I mean, if you want something that's color and that, and that always made you upset about Walking Dead, then... Maybe this is the book for People you. People need to stop bitching about black and white. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, but uh, you know, I thought it was awesome. It was really well it's, done. Uh, I will say it has beautiful art. Yeah. And the story is actually a lot of fun. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. So, you know, want to try something new zombie-wise? Check this one out. All right. Let's get to it. It's Walking Dead number 100. And in this one, uh, Negan captures Rick group and upon Rick's refusal to negotiate with uh, his terms he brutally kills one of Rick's closest friends to get his point across. That's all I really have to say about this book. It's Honestly, brutal. <laughs> it, it is freaking brutal. Um, it yeah. is if you know the Walking Dead series you pretty much I'm not gonna spoil anything you pretty much will probably be able to guess who is horribly brutally murdered here and I mean Literally, brutally, over like 10 pages. It, it's ugh. sad, actually. Oh, God, it's, it's sad. very sad. But uh, there's some really nice build-up here, some really nice character development, and then, well, brutal mur murder. Uh, and the way it leaves off and the way the series might continue after this, I, I, I don't know if I want to read it. It's just that... Oh, dis it's very disturbing. Yeah, there's a... Uh something about the group that's been lost. Yeah. And that um, character's going to be taken out of Yeah. That, you know? um, yeah, this is, a, too much. this is a really hard one to read, especially if you've come to 
especially love these characters because wow, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, it is absolutely. But brutal. kudos for having the guts to you know do something big in yeah. your number one hundred. Yep. You know, like that that takes a lot of guts. So. Yeah. But overall, fantastic as always. The writing by Kirkman as always is fantastic. His real. He's, uh, he's especially strong when doing character work, and it's really strong here. Um, but, wow, it, you will probably not see a more brutal murder in, your, in, in comics probably ever again. This is absolutely brutal, and I cannot recommend it to everyone. No. But uh, Not as, for kids. No. If, if Wacky did ever, it wasn't no, ever, but yeah, definitely well, not this issue. No, no, not this one. <laughs> um, but, yeah, overall, a fantastic number 100, and uh, it really makes you wonder what's going to happen next. All right. Um, next up, we've got Space Punisher, number one of four. In this one, Frank Castle is out for vengeance against the Six-Fingered Hand, an intergalactic mafia he believes is responsible for the death of his family. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just the title alone sounds bad enough. Uh, yeah, I didn't like it at all. <laughs> no, you don't say. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it's really hard. I couldn't really come up with something really positive to say about it. Because normally I would be out there and say at least there's this, you know. Um, but I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the story. I didn't like the art. I didn't, I didn't like it. <laughs> So, uh, if you're... There, there's your uh, <laughs> review. I didn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> um, if you're a Punisher fan, maybe this you will like this, or maybe you will feel as I did, that this did not need to be done. Alright, next up, another blast from the past. <laughs> it's Transformers Regeneration 1, number 81. Yeah. Uh, and in this one, written by Simon Furman with art by Andrew Wildman, uh, Peace has finally come to Cybertron, but underneath the surface, plans are coming together for a dark future, while on Earth, Megatron rules over the ashes of a once beautiful planet. Yes. All so right. So we have these two new series that are going on, and then all of a sudden, we're going to go back to finish this other one, yep. right? Basically, this is a continuation of the original 80s slash early 90s Marvel comics mm -hmm. by the same creative team. Yeah. So that's actually pretty interesting, but... Why? Here's here's where it gets a little <laughs> odd, okay? We've been pretty much indoctrined to yeah. a certain style of Transformers for the last, oh, 10, 15 years yeah. now? Yeah. This goes back to the almost humanistic style of Transformers comics from the 80s. Which, if and you like that, great. It, it, yeah, but it's really off-putting here. Yeah. Because um, we're so used to a n yeah. different style from it. And just to go back into this this style all of a sudden is well a little off putting. I mean, yeah. the story wise, it's it's good. I mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Uh, Andrew Wildman's art is well off off putting a bit, but it's still good. Um, it's just that I don't know why we needed a continuation. It pretty much ended on a perfect note. Um, so I will say, if you're a Transformer fan, you'll probably really enjoy it. It's not exactly for me but uh i mean if you're looking for a continuation of the classic marvel series this is it this is your chance to see what happens next mm -hmm. and uh, not a lot of comics get that chance so yeah if you want to check it out check it out but uh, i can't highly highly recommend it mm -hmm. except for major transformers fans and last for me is Bloodshot, number one. Another blood blast from the past. This is the Valiant uh, Company. Uh, Everything is back. old is new again. Uh, yes, that should be the tagline for this <laughs> episode. episode. <laughs> yep. um, okay, so Bloodshot was made to be the perfect soldier. Pumped full of nanites, he can regenerate from traumatic injuries, survive hostile and toxic environments, shapeshift for a limited time, communicate without the use of radio or other devices um, at long distances, and he has increased strength, speed, and reaction time, and lots of Lots more. So, but his life is a complete lie. Hooray! Wait, <laughs> oh. Yeah. His handlers have been carefully constructing his home life to further control him, and he's on the verge of discovering this. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. 
this was awesome, actually. I, I kind of sounds like true lies to me. Yeah, I, kind of. Except mm. you know, if Arnold had nanites. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I don't have nanites. <laughs> you look crazy. Um, but Bloodshot um, is probably the best thing that came out of the Valiant universe for me before. So I, some yes, surprised that this was really good, but in a way not surprised. Um, you know, this is a great art, well crafted story. Uh, I can't talk highly enough about it. I love this book. Check it out. All right, and last up for me today is Hoax Hunters number one. And in this one, a rash of mass animal deaths leads the hoax hunters to the Louisiana Bayou. What they find is a mystery linked to their past and a dangerous cryptid bent on revenge. Interesting. All right, so this is a spin-off of a backup series from another Image comic. Yeah. And it's actually really damn good. Hmm. Uh, really interesting characters here. A uh, very interesting story. Yeah. It's basically like they have a show about exposing hoaxes and everything, and yet yeah, cool. they're actually people that are... Yeah. <laughs> one of them is a cryptid, one of them yeah. <laughs> has magical powers, etc., etc. So it's like, yeah, we're exposing the hoaxes, but they're actually real. <laughs> nice. So yeah, I like this. This was a lot of fun. Uh, the art is fantastic. The story is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I... I haven't seen anything like this in quite a while, and this was actually a lot of fun to read, and it's got some really interesting characters that you actually kind of start to like after the end of the book. So, Good yeah. week from Image this week. Good week for an Image. It pr pretty much was a Image slash IDW week this week, pretty <laughs> much. So yeah, um, check this one out. It's actually quite a lot of fun if you get a chance. I know I quite enjoyed it. All right, so that brings us to the close of another episode. We will see you next week after another brutal, brutal murder. Brutal.